Scott, welcome to the broadcast. How are you doing today? I'm good, Andre. I'm glad glad we're back together, and I'm glad I'm not <laughs> the one getting beat up this time. I am too. Uh, we've got an exciting, ex exciting piece that we're putting together. Tell me about um, this great fighter of yours. And uh, as a matter of fact, before we get there, uh, for those who may not know of your illustrious career, tell us about your career and how you got involved in boxing. Yeah, Scott Cujo Sigmund, um, formerly rated number eight in the world at uh, Super Middleweight well, by the World Boxing Council. 53 professional fights, 52 of which were in boxing matches. I had a record of 36 wins, 15 losses, one draw. I believe I had 18 knockouts. I might have had 19, though. I can't, I can't recall exactly. Um, you know, so I had a pretty decent career. I fought the likes of Roy Jones Jr. and Kelly Pavlik, who are both uh, going to be in the International Boxing Hall of Fame if they're not already. I'm pretty sure they probably are. Um, and at least a dozen other world champions. So I've been in the deep end of the pool. I got you. And how did you come to find this young phenom of yours? Um, God bless me. You know, he, he walked in a gym. I didn't think a lot of him at first. Um, you know, his dad was pretty hyped up because he had a little amateur boxing career. And the kid looked a little blocky on the bag and stuff. And it's like, hey, man, I want to spar this weekend. And I was like, well, this will be another one. He's 17 years old at the time, just put boxing gloves on. Let's be another one of them kids that you know quits pretty quick. I put him in there with a couple of guys. One was a little heavier than him. Uh, they both had been boxing for about six to eight months, and he just destroyed them both in like 30 seconds. I was like, well, you know, that's that's pretty interesting. Um, so the next week, I brought in a former pro who had 18 professional bouts, and uh, he sparred him, and he stopped him in about 30 seconds in sparring gloves. And so then I sparred him the next week, and uh, you know I. Obviously, I beat the piss out of him, but you know I wanted to see how tough he was. But he did pretty good. Um, he had a lot of innate abilities to defend himself well and move his head rapidly and great footwork. Just blessed with athleticism. You know, um, I don't know how good of an athlete he was in other sports, but once you find once you find your the star that's supposed to make you shine, you got to stick with it or not. And he he was born for this. So, uh, tell me a little bit about yourself, sir. So basically, just normal teenager stuff, going to school, what um, whatnot, um, trying to get through it, trying to get sports, to get scholarships and stuff like that. I started wrestling to keep me out of trouble, um, to have something to work towards, set goals in my life. Uh, when I got into wrestling, I had a lot of people point me to the right direction, uh, get me to where I wanted to be. Then I found, you know, Scott in the gym. So I always wanted to be in the boxing, but I was a little bit on the hefty side, so I never really wanted to try to do it because I never thought I was going to succeed or be something in this sport. Um, so I lost a lot of weight, then came um, to try to work out with Scott to see if I was actually supposed to do this or if it was just like, one of those dreams and then give up type things. Um, stuck with it for a little bit, got into sparring. Um, you know, I did pretty decent for my first couple weeks being here. Got beat up by Scott, see where I was at, you know, on a podium where I was at or whatnot. And uh, now we're here, I'm just trying to make something of myself and represent my, you know, city and where I come from. So Scott, upon that initial meeting, the initial viewing of him, what was he like? What did you see in the beginning? It was just a lot of intangible things. I liked how fast he moved. Um, I really liked how calm he was, very calm. I mean, he never gets upset. He never gets angry. He has no emotion. Um, he's, just a very, he's just a very special athlete. Um, but Scott, let me jump in. Don't you need that anger? Don't you need that aggression to be a good fighter? Well, maybe if you get you married. had an edge. Oh, of course, yes. So I mean, maybe, maybe if you getting buried on the scorecards, you might need to get angry to come back out. But he hasn't even lost a round yet as a pro. Uh, I mean, I, he's I, he's getting he's getting a little meaner. You know, um, I think it comes with his confidence to a degree. You know, when um, when Zapata came the other day, uh, you know, it, it was his ring. And when when somebody came to take what was his, he defended it. Um, I think he's got that edge. I think there's a fine line between being aggressive and just being 
Um, control. Yeah, I mean, I just, I look, so, I mean, obviously we're immensely different athletes, um, but I always look at where I fault to myself, and I, I let my anger control me, um, not just inside the ring, but outside the ring. And Austin is, is, is not those things, you know, and, and something I said a while back, and I, and I mean it, you know, he may or may not have as many strengths as I did. We haven't come to find out yet. But I can tell you one thing, he doesn't have any of the weaknesses. And I think that's going to be the real key, right? Like, at the Weaknesses high, such as? I was uncoachable. Um, I was arrogant. I was a bad person. I made poor decisions outside of the ring in, in, in life. I had very slow feet at the elite level. Um, obviously, that was exposed. And just whenever someone that knew more than me gave me constructive criticism, I wasn't capable of receiving that and improving. And he's checked his ego in ways that I couldn't. And, you know, the other day, I almost get emotional talking about it, but the other day, he said, Scott, man, we could have all done better. I said, no, it's not we could have all done. You are, you are going to do better. And he, and he is, he's going to do better. I mean, he's textbook. I mean, he checks every box as a coach, what you would want for a fighter. He's sitting right here next to me. Everything, every failure I had in the sport, every relationship I created, it was for me. And he's, hopefully he's the first of many. You know, I opened the door for him, but a talent like him, he's going to open the door for so many more after him. Talk about his development. Talk about the progression. Where is he? Where is he going today? I mean, how, go ahead. You, how do you feel about how you're doing? I feel like I'm doing pretty decent for my age and for how long I've been into the sport. I've only been boxing for about a year. Um, been training for about a year and a half, somewhere around there. Um, I feel like I have came a long way from where I started from the beginning. Like Scott said, I was gifted with quick feet and the ability to defend myself, and they helped me tune up a lot with my defense and also my feet work and stuff like that. Um, there's a, still a lot of stuff that I got to clean up on um, to get to where I got to be at, but overall, I feel like my progress is, is going on the right track. I've always told him how good I thought he could be after the second week. I've always told him that. For a long time, you know, six months or so, maybe even one pro fight in, not a lot of people came to watch this far. And I remember there was one, there was one day, there's probably 20, 30 people in here watching this far. And it was a great round with like some grizzled veteran, I can't recall who it was. And, you know, he edged it out at the end using his, you know, great angles and everything. And it was like a little golf clap afterwards. And, and I looked at him, I said, you know something, I've always known you're the star, but everybody else is starting to realize you're the star. When I took him down and I sparred him with the 17-0 fighter and the guy tried to stop, and I sparred him with this other guy that's been on Showtime a couple of times, and he did stop him. I mean, that's when it started to become real, like he's already turning the corner at this age. Um, you know, we got guys coming down the pipe. There's a guy that's 18 and three, and a guy that's 20 and 0 that I've been trying to get in the ring with him. I mean, there's every excuse. They will not, they will not fight him. Now, he hasn't even been tested as a pro in the ring yet. I mean, he hasn't fought anybody it's not a journeyman yet. We're trying to step him up. But trying to get these other contenders in the ring with him has proven almost impossible. I mean, it is – so, I mean, they, they know. They can say whatever they want, but they know. In their heart, they, they know. And if we get this 18-3 and three guy in there with him, he's going to stop that guy in two rounds. I mean, the guy's going to leave on a stretcher. And I'll, I know it's going to be even more difficult to make the fights after that, but I'm completely fine with that. Um, I, you know, I want him. I want him ranked uh, nationally, internationally soon. Um, as soon as I can get one of these top-level guys to come to the table, we're going to call the WBC. We're going to try to make him become the champion that I was at 23. It took me 25 fights. He'll do it before his 20th birthday. I'm sure of it. If we can get one of these guys in front of him, let's break down his intangibles and tangibles. Every fighter has a style. Every fighter has has those key points there their bread and butters, if you will, their go-to moves. Let's talk about the intangibles that he has. Yeah, so the intangibles and the tangibles. So the intangible things is his calm demeanor, his uh, his ability to break down boxing. So 
Um, like I've told you, you know, Owen Hilton is, is very coach-minded like me. I mean, he is an active fighter. He doesn't want me to box him in as a coach. He's a great coach. He runs the gym for me. And one day he was watching me work in the corner with Austin. And he was like, why aren't you talking to him a lot today? And I was just like, he sees things that, now I know all the fundamentals, I know all the scenarios, right? So I teach him about if we fight outside, what to do with the sun and this angle. And if this guy leans this way, what to do. But he sees boxing in like rhythms and patterns that I never sensed. It's like, he's like a Picasso or a Beethoven, you know, he's working on a whole different level. So I like to see what he's doing. I ask him what he's doing and I work him through it because I can't, I'm just not at his level. I do not see the sport the way that he does. Um, so, I mean, that's his intangibles. So the tangible things that people can see, I mean, I already told you this, he can get that lead right hand on people's heads rapidly. Maybe not the greatest combination puncher, but a one punch speed, I mean, it's incredible. I wouldn't say he's terribly powerful. He has incredible endurance, incredible endurance. And his head movement and his foot movement, um, his ability to not get hit cleanly is also going to, I mean, that certainly was not my strength. <laughs> I mean, I covered up and made it a dog fight. This kid doesn't have to, he doesn't have to go through all that punishment right now. I mean, I'm building him to it because one day he's going to run into somebody as talented as him. One day he's going to run into somebody that's talented and coachable as him. So then it's going to come down to the X's and O's and fight night. But right now we're building for that. We're not building to beat these journeymen. We're not building to beat up the guys in sparring. We're building to um, succeed where I couldn't, you know, the, the fights on TV where the real money's made. So what do you think? What, what do you see as the tangibles, intangibles, pros and cons, pros and cons of, of your skill set? I feel a lot of my pros uh, come from the calm demeanor, like Scott said. Um, I don't know where it comes from. It might be because of my the wrestling background, you know, stuff like that. But there's also a saying that me and Scott said at class shows over time. So there's no need to get upset or to get hostile over the situation. Let my skills overshine, you know, throughout the ring. Um, was you know, gifted with great head movement. Um, don't know where that came from either. It just uh, a natural in my body, I'm assuming. Um, I might not know the sport of boxing. Like the, I'm not, my high, IQ is not on the level of Scott's or other fighters out there, but I see things from a different perspective, unlike some people. Um, it's hard to describe, but I just feel different. Um, feelings so I just sense when it's coming and don't really know how to describe it like from the weight yes yeah, friends so he doesn't so he doesn't realize what he's seeing yet so I'm trying to teach him so we were talking about this the other day they did like a sports study on it like elite level athletes they see things before they happen in sport they see it before other athletes they see it longer they're right so I mean he sees those things so he's saying oh I feel it right so He's reading a tell that my eye can't catch from the other fighter. You see what I'm saying? Um, so when I'm countering the counter of a fighter, which is the highest level I got to, he's countering the counter of their counter. So, I mean, he's this far ahead of you when, he, when he's fighting. I mean, I still think, you know, there's sometimes that he shows the emotions of an 18-year-old in the ring. Sometimes he makes it a little harder than he has to be. Um, you know, he's been bullying everybody over recently. So in our mid work, we kind of got back to the things that make him hit and hit, make him himself. And we started working on his feints and his timing and things again. So I think we'll see that version of Austin today in sparring, I hope. Let's go back to something that you said earlier, Scott. You said that he sees things. You know that he is seeing things that you as his coach may not see. How difficult is that? Is it to coach the quote unquote unseen? He's seeing it before you do, but yet you have to coach and help him react. How difficult is that? Yes, I mean, that, that is a great question. Um, you know, a lot of coaches that were former fighters, they try to force the fighters to become them. See, I'm not the kind of coach. I realize, like, you know, Owen is a power puncher. This kid right here, he's a, he's a thinker. He's a chess player in the ring with immense speed. So it comes down to mine and his relationship um, you know, we're, we're friends. I mean, I'm like a big brother to him. I wouldn't say we're the, we're the best of friends or anything. I mean, he comes to me with stuff for advice. Um, you know, it's not like 
I, I think outside of boxing, we might not have, we might not have came together, but we have a good relationship to where I ask him what he's seeing, what he's feeling, how he thinks, and then I use the fundamentals of what I know through boxing to help him diagnose how to work through those issues. You know, I, I don't. I, Isn't it I, come I, natural for you? Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's that hard. Just because I always knew it existed, because all the guys that were beating me, they were on the next level. I just didn't know how it was happening. You know, I mean, now I got to get a look into it. I'm just not that athlete. You know, it's certain guys can't jump so high. Certain certain guys aren't so fast. They don't they don't punch as hard. They don't run as fast. I mean, this is just an ability that he possesses that I never did. Um, but I mean, I know what to do with it. I just couldn't do it myself because I didn't have that um, that athleticism, that trait in me as a fighter. So Scott, what's the plan for DeAndre? How, how are you orchestrating his future? People need to see this talent. So, you know, my job is, as a manager is to find a promoter and, and work out the financials of it for him to showcase his skills. You know, he can have all the skills in the world if nobody, if he don't have no stage to show it, nobody will know. So, I mean, I've been very blessed. There's been a lot of local businesses, um, Caspian's, uh, Tattoo, uh, Quality Lawn Connections, JSC House Washing. There's so many of them, I can't remember all of them. But, you know, um, you can look at my Facebook page, Scott Cujo Sigmund. I'm on his advertisement materials, all the posters. Uh, Ginger Jewelry in, uh, in Roanoke, they're helping him on a fight-by-fight -fight basis to help take care of his training expenses and things like that and helping fund the stage that he's fighting on because there's a lot of cost associated with boxing, not to get into the gritty details of it, but we got to raise money and we got to put asses in seats for the kid to fight. And we've been very fortunate that um, the business owners of the community have recognized this talent and done that. There's a lot of guys, there's a lot of bravado in boxing. They're, oh, I'm the best, I'll fight this, I'll fight this. And the way that, you know, I, and I'm not asking him to do something I didn't do. He's just going to be better at it than me. Every time a big fight came up, even if I wasn't good enough to win the fight, I took it. I fought the best fighters. I just wasn't good enough. This kid is. So we're stepping him up soon. We're going to keep him fighting every eight to ten weeks. Very similar to how I fought um, early on. This will probably be his last fight at 154, probably moving off to 160. Um, he comes from very humble beginnings. Um, you know, not not to say that you know he was dirt poor, or destitute, or anything, but you know, he had a you know, he didn't have a lot of lavish things as a kid. Um, and to my knowledge, both of his parents are, I believe, at least half native. I think they come from different tribes. You'll have to ask him um, about that. But you know, the nickname I'm not even sure where it came from. I think maybe one of his parents came up with it or something. But man, what a nickname! The ring announcer that we work with regularly on the Southpaw Promotions. He said it was one of the greatest nicknames he's seen, and I have to agree with it. <laughs> so how do you feel about uh, the plan that is laid before you? You will be in the ring with the best and brightest. I mean, this is what I'm working for. I'm working and dedicated to get to the top tier level that Scott is trying to point me into going to. Um, I'm ready for whatever obstacles I gotta go to or barriers that I reach that I gotta come overcome um, I'm not, I'm not a pushover like a lot of them think I am. Like a lot of people that I've had always doubt me and stuff like that. I'm here to show them, like this is who I am and this is what I will be. And whatever Scott says, it's the right thing I gotta do and that's what we're gonna do. So I come from, I wouldn't say a rough childhood, but not an easy one. Um, I have anger issues. I've had really bad anger issues in the past, you know, and out of alternative schools, um, disrespectful. There's nobody could point me to the way I want, to the way they wanted me to go. They just, they tell me something I wouldn't listen. I thought I knew better. I thought I knew what I was doing, but really I didn't. I was always bullied. Um, was a little bit on the heavy side, so I was always getting called fat. Said I wouldn't be able to do anything. Was never going to do anything. Uh, everybody thought I was going to be in jail before I was 18, or have a girl knocked up, or just that's the way I was going. Um, in and out of fights, and just wasn't wasn't a good kid. Um, and then finally, you know, a lot of stuff happened in my life, and it woke me up. So I had to figure out something to do for me and my family, and found boxing. I feel like boxing is really good for my mindset um, because it's not it's not an easy sport. A lot of people from the outside viewing it would be like, oh, I can do it, or 
they think it's easy, but when you're in there, it's a whole different ball game. And people, people don't realize that it's easy to say, I can do that when you're sitting in the seat, but it's not easy when you're in the ring. So I feel like it will be good for kids that are coming up that are, you know, think they're what I thought I was, which is really bad and stuff like that. It's not the case. The world's bigger than you. And I've learned to come that at a young age. Of course, Scott is going to take, as you did mention, um, community support. People uh, need to get behind this talent. And as you know, as we hopefully move out of COVID, people are looking to get out more and to support positive things. Talk about community support. So one thing is when you ask him what was his plans, he basically said whatever Scott said. Um, so another time that I've seen this, um, Chris England with the Clubhouse Bar and Billiards is our anchor sponsor, and he's actually a co-manager with me. He's a, the silent manager, obviously. He trusts, trusts me with my expertise in moving him. So, you know, we talked about the business plan. We talked about what um, Deonda was going to do in his career, much like the investment groups that started Ali and Joe Frazier's careers. And Chris looked at him and said, you know, Austin, you've heard me and Scott talk here for about an hour about you as a commodity. I want to know what you think. And that was the moment when I knew how well he was going to do. He said, I'm going to do whatever Cujo thinks is best. Um, we have been blessed with immense community support. We have about 80 to 100 people that drive to Rock Hill, South Carolina for the fights. We have about 80 to 100 to buy it through the pay-per-view stream. You can get that through me at Scott Cujo Sigmund on Facebook. I handle all of his financials. Um, and I'd like to thank some of the businesses who have already um, stepped up and supported him. They took a risk for him. And we're going to honor these people. Like when he's big time and if he's fighting in a world title fight and tickets are $10,000, these people are getting those tickets. They, even though they're only making um, small monetary donations compared to what it's going to take to get there, you know, $500 or $1,000 for a business owner every time this kid fights, I mean, that's big when nobody knows who he is. You see what I'm saying? So Ginger's Jewelry, um, Ginger Mum Power in, uh, in Roanoke, very sweet lady. The Clubhouse Bar and Billiards, Chris England. Um, just somebody that, that I really admire. Um, if you look at what he's took Clubhouse from and to, I mean, it's a premier billiards studio. Um, it's incredible. I, I love Chris. He's been with me through my whole career, um, even before anybody really knew who I was and before anyone knew who his restaurant was. Chris stood behind me. Um, quality Long Connections, um, they're, they're local. Um, Nick Zamedu, who is a big time boxing fan, he wish he had the time to do it himself. Um, and you know, he's seen the kid and he, he really, he believes what, he knows what I know about Austin. Um, Premier Concrete with uh, Patrick Brunt, um, just strong Christian values. He's a, he's a hell of a man. Um, you know, I give him a hard time a lot about his working out, but I mean, he's a really, he's a really solid dude. JSC House Washing, Jessica Cox, another local. Um, sweet, very sweet lady. She, her son was a member at the gym for, for some time. Um, she had seen Austin and she just reached out to me. She was like, how do I help this kid become what I know he can be? Uh, Catherine Schoonover Insurance, um, he's also local. Um, very, very good gentleman, great integrity. Um, you know, he said, I really like what you're doing here. I see where this is going. How can I help you? And then Caspian tattoo Dave Casper. I'm, I'm pretty sure everybody knows who he is. He's <laughs> who a, doesn't? Yeah, he's probably he's probably a bit. He's here today to watch him spar, but he's probably uh, he, more well known in, in Lynchburg than me. And you know, um, and someone like that to build something from nothing to something great, and when they see it, and they see something like themselves in it, and they know that if they put a little bit forward, that they can help this sapling grow into a huge tree. I mean, that's what these people represent to me. Um, and I just hope that we can continue to get the support. And, and I thank all of you guys from the bottom of my heart for what you're doing for this kid to help him follow his dreams.